In this section, we focused on the importance of where we placed our attention in a crisis and how to balance our thinking when we may have too many inputs. We'd like to be able to balance all the stimuli and avoid fixation errors and still maintain the ability to seek new inputs that we need in order to change direction and improve our situation. David, tell me about a time when you've seen a team fall into a pit of fixation error and actually lose their situational awareness. That's a great question. I, mean, I think it happens all the time. And um, a lot of what we focus on in our training is recovery. How do you sort of get that situational awareness back? Uh, one common place, I think, is the transitions. So uh, the team makes a decision, perhaps, like, let's move the patient to CT scan. But then the work of getting that patient to CT scan sometimes falls, um, you know, just on one, one person's shoulders. You know, perhaps the bedside nurse is left, you know, hooking the patient back up to a transport monitor. And sometimes I think other roles in the team are not aware of how much work it takes to prep that patient to leave. For our next activity, we invite you to watch a video produced by Laredal Medical, where they highlight a real example of a routine operation gone wrong. In this instance, fixation error and loss of inputs leads to a breakdown of situational awareness. Then, after you watch the video, consider the different types of fixation errors that you observe. Finally, you'll be asked to read a web article from the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation that highlights similar fixation errors. Pay particular attention to Table 1, which lists strategies for overcoming these types of errors.